This is the story of a football team, the 1974 Fighting Owls of Rice University. in fact a campaign dotted with some frustrations and heartaches, playing an extremely demanding schedule. Yet again, in many ways, it was a successful venture for Coach Big Al Conover and his scrappy Owl players. They made much progress in building a team for the future to put the Rice Owls back among the national leaders in major college football. Remember, as you watch some of the big and spectacular plays by the Owls, that a sizable majority of these men have further eligibility. So many games were so very close, and with talented players returning with more experience, to be joined by top-notch freshmen from a determined, vigorous recruiting drive by Conover and his staff, the 1975 Owls will be highly competitive. The Owls play in the nation's finest football stadium, the handsome 70,000-seat Rice Stadium on the campus in the nation's fifth largest city, Houston, Texas. They play in a respected major league, the Southwest Conference. They represent a school noted for academic excellence and all-around sports achievement. And even though one of the nation's smallest schools in enrollment, they challenge the very best. In 1974, in addition to Southwest Conference foes, they met famed national powers Notre Dame and LSU. Rice had a tie with LSU and barely lost to Notre Dame at South Bend. And the 1975 intersectional foes include LSU again, plus 1974 bowl teams in Mississippi State and Vanderbilt. Rather than a game-by-game -game review, let's meet the Owls by categories of position and recognize the winners of treasured postseason player awards given annually at the R Association of ex Letterman Banquet. First, here will be a hard man to replace, senior place kick specialist Alan Pringle. We see him boom one of his patented beyond-the-end-zone kickoffs, this one to start that epic battle at Notre Dame. And here's another against TCU before the home fans at Rice Stadium. The English citizen, who won all conference honors as a place kicker, also was long and accurate on field goals. And this one against TCU was 50 yards out for a school record. Pringle was a national standout, invited to the Blue-Gray All-Star Game, where he kicked a field goal and three extra points. A team must also have a good punter, for the kicking game is so vital to gridiron success, as Al Conover constantly stresses. And Rice had a dandy for this duty in 1974 in junior Mike Landrum, all-conference when Amir sophomore. This fine boot against SMU in the Cotton Bowl was a 54-yarder with good coverage for a loss of one on the return. But a classic boomer was this one against LSU before 58,000 fans at Rice Stadium, a 70-yard Landrum punt. And then a fumble recovery by John Peterson. Another good example of kick coverage is this nifty play by monster man Larry Bruin against Cincinnati. He knocks the re boost and recovers for a four-yard loss and gives the Owls good field position. So come with us now to one of the real glamour plays of the year. Here is a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against Cincinnati by James Sykes. Second in the nation in kickoff returns as a freshman in 1973, and he gives Rice a potential touchdown threat on every kickoff by the opposition. This was one of many fine plays by rookie David Hauser, both as a return man and as a pass receiver, to earn him the Joe Lipscomb Award as the Owls' most outstanding rookie of the year. The unsung heroes of football are the rugged men of the offensive line. On all the offensive plays coming up, perhaps you can spot the helpful good blocks. It was a close decision, but winner of the George Brown Award as top offensive lineman was 71 Randy Egemeyer. And we see him here on a nifty block to help Kramer in the Rice victory over Texas Tech. 
Al Conover likes for his teams to throw the ball as well as run it. And his Owls use a wide open pro set offense with a quarterback of busy man. Rice had two men under who made major contributions with strong right arms and some dandy receivers to help the cause. First, we see a Houston Williams high product, Claude Reed, in action. Here he fires a 51-yard aerial bomb on this pass and run connection to Kenneth Roy. When the Owls had that terrific battle to a tie with favored LSU, Reed hit this nine-yard scoring pass to the able Roy. But he also had success firing to Rice's top receiver, and he lost him. Here's a shot in the left flat to Lofton, good for 25 yards. And Claude won admirers in the Midwest with these passes against Notre Dame at South Bend. A screen pass, good for 11. And another sure shot talking for 13 and a first down against the Fame fighting out. Against Cincinnati, Reed also demonstrated that if no receivers were open, he could scramble well, as he does here for a 15-yard game. Tommy Kramer, number nine, had a fine sophomore season for the Owls. And we see the San Antonio lad on this nifty pitch for 23 yards to Kenneth Roy when he returned to action after an early season injury. Here was a beautiful pass play by Kramer to freshman David Hauser for a scoring toss of 42 yards that put Rice ahead of the Longhorn. Another standout receiver for the Owls while only a freshman was Jesse Neves from nearby Conroe. He caught this 21-yard pass against Texas. And Kramer also had these aerial connections to Southwest Conference champion receiver Eddie Lofton against Texas this one on a diving catch for 13 and a 27-yard reception. Kramer's passes went to several standout owl receivers as the season went along. In addition to Lofton and Roy and Neves, he hit this 23-yard touchdown pass against Arkansas to Larry Edwards up in Fayetteville. And he had another shot to Californian Edwards in the Aggie game for 13 yards. One of the really spectacular plays of the season out of Coach Al Conover's bag of tricks was this flanker around pass against TCU. Kramer gives to Hauser, and he pitches way downfield to Lofton on a play for 39 yards to set up a score. One of the longest plays of the year was this Kramer to Hauser pass against the Horn Frogs for 43 yards. And here was a short but nifty six yard scoring toss to Kenneth Roy. Against Baylor, Kramer showed his prowess throwing to a man out of the backfield. This 21 yard gain against the Bears from Tommy to fullback Eddie Collins. But to wrap up our section on the Owl aerial game, here was the dazzling 55-yard scoring pass against TCU from Kramer to Lofton that clinched the league receiving title for Brooklyn Eddy. The Rice Owls faced perhaps the toughest schedule in the country in 1974, especially against foes noted for their big and powerful defensive lines. It wasn't easy to make yards afoot, but returning running backs plus freshman signees of promise give rise to a rise in 1975 for the ground game. Veteran John Coleman, shown here ripping off 15 yards against LSU. He's a three-year regular at fullback. And here Coleman sweeps in for a touchdown against TCU behind a good block from freshman house. James Sykes and Artie Seegers are able owl runners, but both men were handicapped much of the season by injuries. Sykes shows his running style against SMU on this camp. Another good effort against the Aggies. And Seegers had this day before a broken ankle sideline. 
But the winner of the George Brown Award as the top offensive back, Gary Ferguson, shows us his determined running style. The little guy from Uvalde was one of the best second effort runners the Owls have had, a spirited leader who was the Rice nominee for the Kern Tips Award given by the Exxon Network. He earned his honors with tough runs. Turning now to defense, Houstonian Ron Vaughn defends against the pass as we first check out Coach Jack Westbrook's secondary. And here is Vaughn on a big play against the Houston Cougars. He intercepts the pass and returns it 28 yards from the Owl goal line. Rice wound up seventh in the nation in pass defense. And a typical play was this one against LSU as Randy Peel tips a Tiger pass and co-captain Cully Culpepper almost intercepts. And soon after, Peel does intercept an LSU pass. At Notre Dame, the Rice cornerbacks and safeties did brilliantly. Here, Culpepper makes a couple plays against All-American Pete Demerley on passes from star quarterback Tom Clements. The secondary men also hit hard as tacklers, such as these good shots by monster man Larry Brune. Brune also roamed about as a pass defender, too, and stopped this toss by LSU. But the Jess Neely Defensive Back Award went to sophomore Randy Peel, and here is a fascinating series of plays to show why. Recovering fumbles is a major show of alert play, and Randy may well have led the nation with all of these in one season. The Owl secondary shows much promise for the future. The linebackers of defensive coordinator Charlie Bailey are key men on defense. So let's see you handle these duties for the 1974 Owls. First, we meet a graduating senior in Dee McCurry, and LSU's Billy Broussard meets him on this typical tackle by the Lubbock Monterey product. In that big battle at South Bend, McCurry and Rodney Norton combined on this stop of Notre Dame running star Al Samuel. And Mark Buccalo had this tackle on Texas phenom freshman Earl Camel. Another senior is Dennis Pokuda, who puts this stopper on Aggie quarterback David Walker. But the winner of the Jess Neely Defense Award as top linebacker for the season was the quick Rodney Norton. Here we see him drop Baylor's Neil Jeffrey for a loss. And he also intercepted this Baylor pass by Jackson on a diving catch. But the big play of the year by the Cleburne Jr., a 1975 All-America candidate, was this stop of Tom Clement on the clutch fourth and one play at the Rice Nine. The front five for the Owl defense had a fine year with impressive players from end to end. And we see him to Brent Barnes make this terrific hit in the Texas Tech game. Another standout Owl defensive end was Chris Fisher. Fisher had a good day against Baylor, recovering a fumble on this effort. Larry O'Neill was another splendid Owl end. And here the Lumberton lad lowers the boom on Notre Dame's Clements for a 12-yard loss. A good example of the tough play of the Owl front five comes in this quick series of consecutive plays in a goal line stand against Houston, all starting at the Rice one-yard line. Coming on strong as the season went along was a hot freshman prospect in Joey Bevel from Houston Spring Woods at tackle. Against SMU, Big Joey drops Ricky Wesson for a loss of six. At Arkansas, he grabs a fumble recovery. Against the Aggies, he combines with Medford to force a five-yard loss. The TCU game saw the L front five really put pressure on the quarterback as we see a series of quarterback sacks all in one game.
Cornell celebrated our front five men were two excellent seniors in all conference, Cornelius Walker and 270 pound Jody Medford. Cornelius put a big hit against Cincinnati to cause a fumble recovered by Fisher. And he repeats as the Neely Award top defensive lineman for many more big plays all season, such as against Notre Dame. The big award winner of all, the George Martin Most Valuable Player Award, went to Husky Jody Medford of Clear Creek. And here are some big hits by the giant senior. A nine-yard sack of Cincinnati's Miller. Recovery of an LSU fumble after a hit by Rodney Norton. And on his last play as an owl, Jody Medford racks up a Baylor runner for a loss of two. So it was a fascinating season for Rice and Al Conover's clan. Some ups and some downs. But some good men returning who can combine with the 1975 freshman recruits to give the Owls a team able to challenge another rugged schedule.